Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can. So I must be having some issue on site there. Can you see me? Nope. Can't see me? Can't see your background. Oh, here we go. Hey, Austin. I can see you. Says you're muted. Oh, I hear sound. So I think this is going to work. We're going to find out. Derek, Derek he's got to sit, Kim. Um, Derek, Kim. Um, we're going to try to get by with this. How well can you guys hear us? Can hear you okay. I guess that's the microphone you're holding. Yes. Uh, so our entire AV system has decided not to work today. They fixed it last week, but it has somehow been unfixed since I was last year. So nice. Yeah. So we're all going to have to speak up, share, hold hands. Um, <laughs> But I'll yell. I have no problem with that. It's fine right now. Kind of. She's going to be one. The rest of you. Okay. So it's recording. So we're going to go ahead and call this meeting of the Wayfinding and Branding Committee to order. It is 11 10 a.m. Um, first up is the adoption of the agenda. If there are no changes, can I get a motion to adopt the agenda as it is? All right. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Next up is the adoption of the previous minutes from our March 1st meeting. If there are no changes, can I get a, a motion to adopt those as presented? Christina. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. All right, Sean, uh, let's turn it over to you guys for the revised sign concepts and revised map. Oh, great. Well, thank you all for convening this morning. Uh, technological issues aside, and awesome. I appreciate you driving all the way home from the beach on your vacation this morning for this this three hour meeting that we're 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 going to hold here. But um, I'm going to start with. Um, the sign designs and then we'll move into some mapping and then Aaron is going to share some research that he's been doing on uh, some possible funding mechanisms. Everything all right there? Right now. Can you still hear us on? 
I can. I can. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. All right. Sounds like it's coming through loud and clear. <laughs> yes. Sorry, you guys are good to go. Okay, good. Okay, good. Um, so uh, I've got the sign designs up, and I'm hoping, uh, based on our discussions through the, the whole branding process, that we can kind of dig into some of the feedback that you all provided on sign design, because I went in to make some tweaks based on the, uh, the input, but I kind of felt like the input was a little all over the place some people really liked um one and three somebody like uh, you know a few people really like two um and so i wanted to see instead of trying to um you know pick and choose between the uh the feedback really see if we could just talk about a consensus direction here on which one that we want to hone in on and again you know if we want to take an element from um one and put it in with the other or change of color all of that is very easy and doable but um, i just didn't really feel like there was a consensus in the feedback and so just wanted to have a bit of a discussion about that to start off <clears throat> and then um we can you know move into the mapping but i will say that before we get started on like digging into that that um, i did add a couple of sign options based on some uh feedback that Austin shared when we followed up last week about adding some pole mounted gateway options. So we still have the monument style uh, signs with a modification for the park sign that falls more in line with the existing uh, Marvin Eford park sign, uh, but did want to show a couple of pole mounted options that we could do in, in lieu of the more uh, you know, the larger monument signs take up a little bit more space, but are also probably going to be a bit more expensive to implement. So with that, I wanted to kind of see what, what everybody thought about the sign design and see if we could kind of land on a direction. Yeah, I think yeah, I thought the, the concept too was our preferred sign. It is. Uh, y'all kind of jump around in different different areas of it. Some of y'all like the lighter wood. Some of y'all like the darker wood. Some of you like Village of Marvin on the side. Some of you like it on the top. Um, so that's kind of the, the things we need to narrow down on. The, oh. the, the physical aspects. The last. The but we're, we're on concept two though, right? That, I mean, that's where we all landed. For the most part, I think one person likes concept one better. You're out. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> yeah, he knows who he is. I, I like the craftsman. So I'm good. I'm good with that too. Okay. With the gate, with the main gateway sign, with the the rock, the stem, is is that was kind of what we thought was going to be the main gateway sign. Are you guys saying that's going to be way too expensive to put them in the areas that we look? So we should pick something else. No, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily going to be way too expensive, but I think it's always good to have options whenever you're dealing with some of your less traffic ingress routes, you don't necessarily want to invest all of the money into a monument sign where a pole mounted gateway can really create that sense of arrival for people. Uh, and whenever we get into the map, we can look at some of those locations because you know, one of the key places that I see a sign possibly being located would be Ray Road. And, um, you know, there, since it is outside the municipal boundary, we don't necessarily want to invest in a large sign that may need to change. But if we do a pole mounted there, then we can do the monument sign more at the municipal boundaries. We're moving your pipe a second. 
The stone of the base. There's a couple of the stone is at the top. I think it would. I mean, at some point, the signs, let's face it, Two C is a big sign because the banner is on the side there. I mean, and Two E is the same thing. Those are really big signs. And I guess at some point, you, you run out of space. You know, you're going to cut trees down to put a sign up, and that sounds like not a Marvin thing, I hope. Would it be okay to integrate all of the twos depending on where they're relevant? So that's a question, Sean. We, yes. do, you have, do you have both versions? Let's just pick 2B and 2C because they're beside each other. Those are very different from one another where the, the village of Marvin words are. Would you have both of those? Out and about in the neighborhoods, or you pick one or the other? With those, I would probably pick one or the other. I think one of the options we could consider, um, you know, if the concern is the sign is very large, if we look at concept 2C, where we could kind of do a two stage approach where the first sign you see as you come into the community would have the banner on the side with Village of Marvin. But as you got into the community, it would just shrink down to more like to be without the header where it's just the directional panel, but you pick up the style of the sign, but you don't necessarily have to have that secondary panel on there. But then you have the sign. I would much rather consolidate them instead of having. It means like the first sign you see in the, in the community is the one with the village model on top. Yep. And then I'll, you're not adding additional signs, just the first one as you would see would have that on that. Then, and then the yeah. Basically, basically, as you pass a gateway, the first one of these you'll see would have this on it, and then the rest of them would just revert to this. Would revert to some, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that, I can figure out why. The ones at the end, as far as the village of Marvin, those that. Is the choice other than the one down below? It's the gateway signs versus the one in the big stone, which we may I, use depending on what the price is. Oh, okay. And, I, and obviously, that the, the, the two C is going to be less expensive. But I, but I would uh, suggest maybe the accent of the stone in 2A to be on that village of Martin. The. Just the gateway. The blue. So, Sean, it seems like we like the blue Village of Marvin emblem on 2A, for example, and not the yellow one. Okay. So, so just to help, just help uh, refine this a little more. If you're looking at the, the curves on the sign, so these have the little curved notches in 2A. 2B and 2C are just horizontal, and 2D and 2E are are completely squared off. What design aspect do you offer? I don't like the curves. I don't like the curves. Wonderful, it's got to actually. I'd much rather. 2A, 2C are good. 2 what? 2A, 2B, 2D, 2D, just 2B and 2C. That okay, we'll go down the line. We'll go down the line. You, give, me, give me a concept. Okay, the curves. my concept is blue, the color blue. Okay. That the gateway side has stud at the bottom, and the, the wood angles would be 2C. 2C wood angles. That's what I'm looking for. We got two wood angles now. Okay. Wood, angles. wood angles. The angle are the, the squared off, just not the curve. Okay. Yeah. So the angle So 2C, 2 they're mostly two B and two C points inside here. No, two B. I'm looking at the curve. Oh, curve. 
<laughs> it does actually. It has a little. It has a little notch. It has a little. It's flattened at the top and it slants. So no matter what kind of wood you have, if you don't have half so the water can off the top and the top. Yeah. So if you go with the the that eliminate the problem? Yes. Yes. This slant. Okay, and you're saying because you A has that little like that's like that's gonna water some water. What'll happen is this water will sit here eventually that point will fall off. Okay, that's what we need to know. Okay. okay. So we need to go meet the well B and C are the same. Correct. So no. No, the same the kind of wise. No, actually B is a little bit So B B has a B is a little flat at the top, then goes into a slant. C is a complete slant. Uh, I like B. Okay. okay. Okay, so we said 2C. I'm going to go with C. C. B. 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 Oh, there's not here. Here's the reason for C versus B. The same problem that he said. What do you think? I like C. M like C. I'm, I'm only picking C because of the water issues and how these things can be great over time and they'll go fast. So, is anyone really opposed to C? Okay. So, Colin, let's, let's go with C for now. The, the, the curves on C. So, we're going to do the, we're going to do the blue sidebars for A, for 2A, uh, and the slanted edges on to C. Mm, okay. okay. And, and did you all discuss the, the panel, whether we we're going to do the um, the scallop in the panel or not? I think it's the curve in the panel. So you guys, I'm guessing, would like a flat panel, right? So, so yeah, we're, we're going to do the, this, the um, rectangular panels. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, definitely blue, but no curves in the panel. I don't think. Yeah. So I think we're good there. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that that should kind of combine all the pieces of the puzzle for me so that I can set about designing all the individual panels for the signs. Here's my problem. I just have a question that when you have the village of Marvin going down the left side, it, and we want to do as few signs as possible. If we put the village of Marvin across, doesn't that let us or allow us to use the left and the right side if we have more places we want to designate? So you just probably not. Much. So you're never going to do more than three places, three, three things on a sign. You're not supposed to. So the MUTCD, and I can actually, I've, I've got it pulled up actually for just this point. It says community wayfinding guide signs should be limited to three destinations per sign. Now, again, this the MUTCD is a book of recommendations. So this is going to be one of the next topics we discuss whenever we get into the map and we start talking about the potential to having four destinations on signs. What I wanted to do after our meeting today was kind of ask you all some questions, get your insight and, and uh, you know, your thoughts on this, and then put an email together for the engineer that Austin and I have already met with, the DOT engineer, to talk about the potential for some of these requests. Uh, as far as four destinations on a sign and um, there was an oh and we're going to talk about the golf course too uh, as seeing about whether we can include that on the sys in the system or not uh, so we can tech we can probably go up to four destinations uh, on a few signs if the need arises um, but you know it's been our experience in, in with other systems that DOT is fairly amenable to that if we're not trying to do too much. 
Uh, it's just, but it varies state to state engineer, district to district. Thank you. And it probably depends on how slow you go through that part to be able to read all that well, theoretically. So, um, anything else from us on the actual <clears throat> No, I don't. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make on the design, we're good. This thing, if we go with blue on the banner, everything's blue, right? Because the sign part is blue and the banner part's blue. Just make that's an obvious statement, but I'm just making sure that we both we all see that. I'm gonna have any yellow or yellow well, it looks like the words Village Marvin are. Uh, yes, that would be it. I don't want to start with, correct? Correct. Yes. <laughs> she wasn't planning on using it. <laughs> I agree. I have a question. I mean, one of the things you see today often when we find good signs, even state DOT signs, is the weathering factor, the discoloration. Mm -hmm. And you know, Kim was saying she doesn't like fill, and I was, I agree 100%. Based on experience, Sean, a good question. What, what is the replacement factor on wayfinding signs? How do they weather? Typically, I mean, they're. The the panels themselves, if they're if they're fabricated appropriately, uh, you know, the aluminum is very durable, and the vinyl that is put on there weathers pretty well uh, for the most part. I mean, the the darker it is, the less it shows weathering to me. You know, the white of signs is definitely going to pick up more debris from traffic and exhaust and weather and all of that. Um, but, you know, we typically expect a 10 to 15 year lifespan out of a sign, barring somebody, you know, driving into it or a tree falling on it. Uh, yeah, that, I think that that's pretty typical for, for lifespan. And, and I say, you know, that also whenever you go into bedding your fabricators, making sure that the, whoever's done it has done vehicular wayfinding before, because they do, uh, have uh, just a different uh, well they're fabricated differently with materials but they're also subjected to different uh weathering than a lot of other signs are do they give a uh, company warranty manufacturer warranty for a length of time um, you know, I don't know about a warranty. I think that that would definitely be a discussion to have with your fabricator that barring like a natural disaster or user interaction, like say with somebody driving into one, I would definitely ask your vendors of the life expectancy. If you were to just put this sign on the side of the road and leave it in the weather for 10 years, like what can you expect out of it and, and hopefully they should have you know some good insight into that there's a there's a sign uh if you go down providence road it's the lenny stadler way sign at that intersection when you turn left and of course it's a dot sign but that the sign is chipping and flaking completely off and it's not been there that long so i'm thinking to my, myself if the if Marvin buy, you know, purchases, anything like that happens within a few few years, you want to have those things replaced for free. Well, so the fabricators enjoy it. Hey, I'm just this is Andrew chiming in. I'm pretty sure that many of these manufacturers have warranties that go along with the the fabrication of the sign. Like Sean says, you know, obviously they're not going to warranty yeah. somebody running it over. Yeah, Aaron, that's what, Aaron, that's what we were just saying. We have seen, um, it wasn't our project, but I think it was Asheville, North Carolina, 
had a bunch of signs fabricated and installed. And the first summer they were up, um, the, whatever vinyl they used, the heat melted everything and all of the letters shrunk up and shriveled up. And so I, I don't know exactly what the fallout from that was, but I think they were all replaced uh, and you know done properly after the fact. Okay. Um, are we all good to move on to the maps? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. We will move into the map. So, uh, last when uh, it was a week or so back. Uh, Austin and I met and he had shared a lot of the follow-up and feedback that you all provided in your work session a couple of weeks ago. And I really appreciate you all taking the time and really digging into these maps. I, I know that it is it can be fairly tedious, um, but that, that makes sure that we have a good system and we go through that tedium on every one of these systems internally. So you feel our pain having uh, dug through this and you know, relatively you all have a fairly small system we've had systems with over a hundred signs and all so you can only imagine uh, how tedious that gets at a certain point uh, but a couple of things to just point out that we did do and based on your feedback is we removed a few of the destinations from the system, such as the historic store and the um, shopping dining district out at Publix uh, Market and the Six Mile Greenway, since it is technically just outside of your boundaries. And so those we've kind of updated these, but we've also played around with uh, consolidating a couple of the schools into a Marvin uh, just into Marvin schools on the signs. And we're looking at adding the elementary schools on there. And so as far as destinations go, that's, that's what we're looking at right now. And then um, I, one of the things I did also was I drew the heritage district boundary on the map. So that we can now see that and we can look at where uh, gateway signs for the heritage district could go. And again, these would be similar pole mounted signs uh, like what I just showed for the community, but they would be for just the heritage district based on the signs that we showed uh, through the branding process. And so we can kind of see where that all what all that encapsulates here with a couple of destinations in here. And so not a lot has really changed with the signs. Um, but one of the things that kind of started to add a little bit of friction to me in the, the system was looking at adding the elementary school. Because if we look at a couple of these signs here um, at this main uh, intersection here of Newtown and I forget the name, um, Marvin School Road, you know, this is where we start. If we are considering adding an elementary school to the wayfinding system, we really start to add a fourth destination to a number of signs. And from a design standpoint, one of the other considerations um, I'm going to have to start taking like a, a good long look at whenever now that we've got the sign design concept sort of narrowed down is these signs are going to be around uh, near the roundabouts as well. And roundabout arrows are larger and a little bit more detailed than typical like left or right arrows. So they take up a bit more space on the sign. So I'm gonna have to really work on making sure that I've got clearances and the right sizes for those arrows given the sign size. 
So all that to say, um, we typically do not include elementary schools on wayfinding systems because our community wayfinding signs are typically directed at visitor destinations, which are usually more high school, sometimes middle and rarely elementary, unless there just happens to be space on an existing sign. Uh, because the high schools have a lot more visitor traffic for games and events than the other types of schools. So that was one of my first questions to the group is how important is it that we make the elementary schools fit into the system or do we think or do, or do we feel with four destinations and the roundabouts that it might be able to make it? Sean, I've gotten a opinion on that. I think in, in that particular instance, in, at that particular roundabout, I would like the elementary school to be included. The golf course is a private golf course. The people going to the golf course know where that golf course is. But many people coming in, Marvin, may or may not know where the elementary school is. They may be have, coming in for a special function. Uh, and this is a wayfinding sign, correct? Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, from an application perspective, it makes more sense to have Marvin Elementary on the sign than a private golf course that everybody just has to get to. Second thought. Well, me too. I think because we have two elementaries in there, one is Marvin, one is Sandy Ridge, that we're trying to make sure people kind of know when they're going to. But yeah. there we go. That was what I was here about. There's four things on the sign. If it was up to me, the golf course can be removed. Yeah. But I would just keep our school system, you know, the elementary there because we have two elementaries. Yeah, the third. Any other thoughts on elementary schools and the golf course? I think the golf course may open there by the golf course. It depends on here. Yeah, yeah. they're right in there next to the golf course. And there, there you go. There's your golf course. So if we're taking the golf course off of this sign, are we leaning towards removing the golf course from the system? I would be I think that you get the golf course Austin, I can't hear. Yeah, I can't hear what the conversation. Yeah, there's a chance we can't put it on there at all. Depending on what the DOT says. Yeah, well, I mean, so that's why we just. So, Christina, reiterate. Oh, all, all I said was, I was just reiterating what what Minnie said that at the turn to the golf course, maybe there's a sign there, but otherwise, I'm not sure. I, I don't care whether there's signs for the golf course anywhere. I mean, relative to where a school is, or where Village Hall is, or the what, the park. But those are actual. They're important to me. You, Bob, golf course. Do you need golf course anywhere? I think there's application for golf course, out, maybe in other situations, but not in that particular. Yeah, we know that. Right. If we're, if we're going to have three, and I think those are the three. I believe we need to focus on things that pertain to our municipality. Yeah, yeah, that's a better so, way to look at it. This particular sign is on the golf course for the elementary school. The one, the one but his question was, do we take it out of the mix completely? And I said, I don't care. I, I'm fine with that. But just as just as a point of view, I, don't know. I would like the signs to refer mostly to our municipality. Yeah, I think that's a good way. To and look. and you know, village hall, and the historic <laughs> district, and our schools because. Those those things to me, you know, I'm very proud to be in more than those elements in all of them. The education system here is outstanding. Got a great image. So if if we're down to four, Sean, and something has to be eliminated, the one I would prefer to have eliminated would be one that's not um, directly related to the municipality. 
That makes sense. And, you know, I was just going to say that, you know, one of the things that we want to make sure that we're doing is being consistent through the system. And so that's why I want to make sure that we don't have a sign that we've got room for something like the golf course, but we don't have a follow through sign to let people know they're still heading in the right direction or to make a turn. So it's, um, yeah, I think that if, if we can ask DOT if it can be included, then we just consider it at a couple of the locations that are more approximate to the golf course itself to just let people know, especially here at this uh, coming roundabout on the west side that, you know, let people know head north and you'll get there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm fine with just having it sort of on those adjacent signs. Sean, uh Quick question. Last meeting we discussed, um, I don't think there was an answer for it, but you know, we we wanted to promote Firethorn because versus golf course, and because everybody's proud of Firethorn in this community. And have we have we gotten any resolve on that? Something that we start to sort out with NCDOT. There's a chance that there may not. There's a chance they'll say you can't put golf course on there at all because the golf course you're referring to. We still have to figure that out. Yeah, the likelihood is that if we can include any reference to the destination, it will only be as a golf course. We won't be able to put a brand such as Firethorn because it is a private establishment. Is there a difference for private schools? Kim was saying that she has seen uh, private schools on DOT signs by name. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think they would, uh, I don't think many private entities would qualify. Uh, you know, typically by the letter of the MUTCD, it has to meet a certain threshold. Like when we did the project in Fort Mill, we had signs to Carowinds because Carowinds this is a major tourist des destination and it brings in, you know, millions of visitors and, and you know, makes a huge economic impact to the region. Um, so that definitely met that threshold. Um, and so, you know, that would definitely be if there is one that we're wanting to consider, that would be a question to put to DOT uh, again, because that's there's going to be variations between engineers and districts and states that um, you know I, I can't speak specifically to. So I'm going to just... right now. Sorry. So if we want the word fire thrown on there, then we just need to go to DOT and ask them. Okay. And one thing that might help me, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'd like to put this to the engineer at, DO, at NCDOT. Uh, and so it might help me if you all, I'm trying to think. I, I kind of want to make a statement of the impact that Firethorn has on the community to kind of make the case if that is something that interests you all in, you know, making sure we can do. Uh, because, you know, I, I get from a visitor standpoint, you know, myself as an outsider that you probably have a lot of people coming through Marvin to get to the fire, the, to Firethorn and to the golf course, even, you know, people that are outside members, people that are bringing friends, family, possibly even business associates, you know, having meetings out there on the golf course as guests, you know, so you know, there is definitely an importance and an impact that Firethorn makes to the village. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of making that case to DOT. So if you all have any language about how, you know, you may promote Firethorn from Marvin's perspective, uh, economic development standpoint, something like that. Um, 
or any facts and figures. I don't know if you all have any sort of economic impact uh, research on that even, DeMarvin, or not. Um, but anything like that that might help that we can put in front of DOT to make the case, I think any of that could help. Austin, I can't hear anything from your end now. Nothing. Hopefully your wayfinding signs come with a better warranty than your AV equipment. <laughs> Hello. I, I hear you now. Um, okay. Okay, so I think we're good there. Um, I think you're good, to, you're good to keep going, Sean. Okay, good. Um, so I just have a couple more questions here uh, that some things that uh, Austin and I had discussed last week that, um, well, since we're talking about the elementary schools, one of the things that I wanted to run by you all is adding some later phase signs uh, down here along Waxhaw Marvin Road for the Sandy Sprint or Sandy Ridge Elementary um, because it's a little bit far out from the existing signs here to direct. And so I'm going to add a couple of later phase signs for that since we're putting the um, elementary schools into the system. Uh, but thankfully, it's got a different name as Sandy Ridge instead of Marvin Ridge because we have consolidated the high and middle schools on these other signs into Marvin Ridge schools. And so that that actually works out pretty well. I think the idea is that you're turning off to go, you're turning off on Crane Road to go to Marvin Ridge before you, you've even gotten to Sandy Ridge. And the signs already have three destinations too. So the signs are a bit full and it's, there's not really a clear way to put Sandy Ridge on those signs. As they currently stand, so you would need a supplemental sign beyond it. Basically, just directing people to turn left here for Sandy Ridge. But they those can be later phase uh, again because they're not critical to the overall system, but still important to the community. And one of the questions that came up was, you know, we're, we've got this park, this pocket park near Publix that we, you know, I, I will put together a simple rendering of what that park sign could look like, much like, like the Marvin Eford Park, uh, kind of informed and plays into the new system. Uh, but what is that pocket park called? Do, have we settled on a name or do we have some contenders? Is that like, what's the, the process we need to go through to land on a name for it? Uh, you know, just kind of curious as where that is with everybody. Council has not made a decision. We'll let you know when we come up with it. Okay. Like the, the name's not final, so that's still something that's to be decided. All right, that sounds good. <laughs> that works. I'll just so we've already got the rendering of what the park sign could look like. So that'll be an easy fix whenever we get to that point. Um, and even if we don't. If, if that's not established before the end of this this process, then that's something that can easily be done down the road. So I 
think um, you know, Austin, refresh my memory. We at, we did have a discussion a bit about Village Center, and you know, looking at you know, we've got the Heritage District and we've got the Village Hall, but the understanding that we're going to have. The, uh, the farmer's market, a potential amphitheater, we've got the walking trail greenway there. You know, is that something we want to consider instead of directing people simply to Village Hall, we simple send people to Village Center. Um, and as that gets built out, it will be, it can be the, the farmer's market at Village Center. It can be the greenway at Village Center. Village Center amphitheater, something along those lines. Just wanted to kind of put that out there and and get some input from you all on that as well. So basic, basically, as the site continues to develop and multiple things are here, obviously we can't, but this way, though it's all a farmer's market, we're gonna have way too many destinations depending on one sign. So we could eventually kind of advertise this area as a the village hall complex, the Marvin Village complex, Marvin Village Center, something just to signify that there are multiple things in this one location. You guys are okay with that concept? Just eventually coming up with a new name for this area. Because right now we're not gonna we're not gonna have anything in the near term. Okay, so we're we're good on that, Sean. Okay. So that answers my questions. Well, it, it kind of helps me move some of these questions forward to put in front of the DOT so we can wait for a response for those so I can build out and finalize the content of the signs for you all to review. I've got the sign designs pretty much well narrowed down from your input, so I appreciate that. So um, unless you all have any questions about sign design or the mapping, I'd like to turn it over to Aaron and let him provide some of uh, the information he's been able to research on possibly funding the system. So really fast, Sean, um, if you go over to the intersection of where Bonds Grove meets Providence, uh, we wanted to have a gateway there, and that symbol is not currently on the map. Scroll down further. That's where Bonds Grove meets. That's the next row down. Oh, bon this Bonds Grove down here? Here? Yep. We're on one right there. Okay. So, all right. All right. When we think, where were you all thinking about having a gateway at that intersection? I mean, the, the right side of the road there is in Marvin. Uh, no, when, no, 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 no. When, if you're, as soon as you turn on the Bonds Grove Church Road, the right side there is in Marvin. Yep. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to look at that intersection to see what is there currently to see where a good general location for that would be. Because it looks like there is a sign of some sort there. There's uh, there's a couple things going on there. So I'll look, see where, where that should generally be placed. We think there's a sign there currently. Um, Sean, uh, so I think that's all the... I think that I think we went over everything. Is are we good for Aaron to move on to talk about funding? Great, thank you all. Aaron, take it away. All right, I'll get right into it. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, Sean, it must be you because that echo is no longer echoing, which is good. Um, so it must be your sound system that, that was echoing. Anyway, um, sorry, that was a technical thing on our end. Uh, so I did do a little bit of research. I kind of expanded on what we had discussed briefly the last time I had, had listed a few things for you all. Um, you know, many of the things that I, I've, I've learned um, really confirm what we had discussed before. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it's in, in Marvin, it's going to take a little bit of creativity to figure out exactly how we're going to fund these things. Um, you know, on the one hand, you all have a simple system. Sean just mentioned this. You got fewer signs than, than most places where we work. 
And that really allows us to do some very fine phasing um, that just makes a lot of sense. And I think that that's going to make it more economical over the course of the project. On the other hand, um, you all lack some of the key resources that awesome, uh, that often fund these. Um, and, and, and the two main ways that these are funded, by far and away, the main way is through occupancy taxes. Asheville's done this, Cabarrus County. I just looked at places around y'all, Lexington, Mount Airy. Um, they've all funded these programs through occupancy taxes. Um, so that's normally run through the Convention and Visitors Bureau. I don't even know if Hinton County, excuse me, has CV, CVB outside of Monroe, but regardless, and I guess this is obvious, without really having any lodging in Marvin, this is really not, I don't think, going to be an option for you. Um, you may be able to partner with a CVB to get a little bit of funding, but it's definitely not going to be like those others that I mentioned where they're really getting either all or a big chunk of the money through occupancy taxes. The next thing that um, sort of the next main way that's, that's often used is through general funds, through your capital improvement uh, project programming, through re reserve funds that you all uh, may, may have. Um, you know, that's not the easiest, you know, sort of pill to swallow there, I think, um, because it's, there's no outside funding there. But a, 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 an example is one way funding program that Sean recently did was in Albemarle and recently appropriated through their general funds $167,000 for phase one of their project. Now, obviously, Albemarle is a lot bigger than you all. Um, they specifically, uh, in, in the resource that I read, called out business licensing. Obviously, that's not really much of an option for you all because you don't have a ton of businesses in Marvin. Water and sewer connectivity and electrical fees, that's basically the part of their general fund monies that they used to, hey, to do it. Yeah. Uh, we, we have, we've already been working on our capital improvement plan for our next budget. And yeah, we definitely do not have that as an option at the moment. Um, we would definitely be more interested for funding. Um, if there are any grants out there, we're also looking at doing a geo bond in the future to really take care right. of a lot of it where we could include wayfinding in that proposal. No, I got, uh, and, and, and that's right where I was transitioning to. I just wanted to give you all the, the tough love for before we moved, moved on. Um, you know, some of the things that are out there right now that I think are real opportunities for you all that you might want to pursue. Um, now, granted, this first one, I'm not super familiar with, although I know it ha in terms of the process, but I do know it's paid for a number of projects that, that, that we've worked on. Um, but also I found a couple of North Carolina examples of projects that it's paid for, and that's ARPA money. So um, I don't know if y'all have done any ARPA projects or use money, but for example, Rowan County right now, they just um, appropriated from their ARPA funds $500,000 for wayfinding and gateways. That's a significant amount of money, obviously. Go ahead. Regarding our, we did, we did get about a million dollars in ARPA funds. For those of you that don't know, ARPA is the American Recovery or Relief and Recovery. It's, it's COVID funds, basically. Oh, yeah, the COVID funds. Yeah. And we have, um, we have, we have used some of it. We still have some, but I don't think it's available for this project because we've already allocated it or planning to allocate it to other projects. I don't really think that's going to be a funding source available for this. And maybe, you know, again, I don't know. I don't know that you know it better than I do, Austin, that particular funding stream. Um, but I do know recently Rowan's, like I said, tapped into it. So it was something where uh, the, the, the tourism authority requested from the county the money for that. So it may have been them reappropriating their own monies. I have no idea. Another one, cashiers recently went to Jackson County to um, so this is obviously Western North Carolina 
to tap into some of Jackson County's ARPA money. That might be potential as well. You know, I, like I said, we have to think create creatively about this. Another one that's. I definitely think we could we could definitely inquire with the county if they would be interested in donating any of their funds. I'm I'm not familiar with how they plan to allocate their ARPA funds. I will note that we don't have the best relationship with them right now, so we're that's. My hunch is that that's not going to be an option, but we can definitely inquire. Well, it wouldn't hurt to ask, obviously, and I know it's easy for me to say that because I'm not the one doing the ask, <laughs> especially if there's a if there's a relationship issue there. Another one that I didn't realize I knew this grant was out there and it's a great grant. And I didn't realize it was um, it had ever been used for uh, for wayfinding, but it's also right outside your back door, same county, Indian Trail got $50,000 from uh, NC Commerce and Rural Economic Development Grant. Now, you may say, well, we're not rural, um, which is probably true, but, you know, Indian, Indian Trail is no more rural than you happen to be. Um, and they were able to, to get that money through NC Commerce. And 50 grand for a, a phase that's a pretty decent amount of money to get kickstarted on, on a project here. Now, I don't know if there was a match to this. There probably was, but still, um, that's something. And I would, you know, that's definitely something y'all could pick up the phone and call Indian Trail. We could do that too um, and, and, and ask them a little bit more about that. Similar, and honestly, these may come ultimately from the same source, but Wilson recently used a USDA grant to help fund theirs. They actually got close to $200,000 in a USDA grant. Um, they had also money. They had a lot of match, which probably helped. They had money from their local TDA. They also had a very significant um, appropriation from the city. So, so um, you know, that might be an option to inquire about. I can do a little bit more research to see if there's other examples of that, maybe that are a little bit smaller. Obviously, Wilson's, most most of the places I'm talking about are going to be bigger than you all. Um, and then I guess other things that are out there are uh, just random uh, NCDO DOT grants and funding from their step monies. And, you know, I think that you know, a lot of those grants that they have are for planning from, you know, uh, from this type of project standpoint, but obviously they have money for infrastructure enhancements as well. What we've seen in the past, and this is where it gets complex, obviously, is that um, these are often grants that you would go after for a specific project, say for pedestrian improvements or a, a corridor new corridor streetscape or something like that. Um, and then you tie in the wayfinding component to that. This was really more of a puzzle piece. I don't think there's any of these grants that would pay for a full program, but if you had a uh, DOT funded project that came through your area, you could um, certainly insert some monies in, in your grant application to pay for the wayfinding that would go there. Um, some others, and, and those, I think that those are the most, um, you know, concrete ones. We talked about occupancy and general funds, and those not being an option for you all. ARPA, given the complications of you already speaking for your ARPA monies, but maybe there's an opportunity to think about reallocation or even tapping into the, the county. There's the Rural Economic Development Grant with NC Commerce, and they're, they're great to work with. I can get you contact information for the people that we deal with up there, and um, they're just incredible. Um, but again, talking to Indian Trail, seeing what what they've how they did it, USDA monies, and then random DOT grants. There's some others that are out there that I think are a lot more loosey goosey and random. And the first one is loosey goosey. I I just don't know it as well as you would do um, often in this, and that's geo bond. 
I think that it can be used. Um, I can't. I haven't been able to find an example yet of where um, where they have been used for wayfinding. Uh, however, I have seen them used for very specific roadway and transportation projects, park projects, each of which most likely most likely have a um, you know a signage component to it as well. You know that goes hand in hand with pedestrian enhancements and mobility. Um, so you know, like I said, I, I haven't really found an example of where it's been done, but I don't see why it can't be done. Um, yeah, we're going, um, we're going through a long process right now with financial advisors to talk about um, how a geo bond process would work and when it would go to the when it would go to Marvin voters to uh, vote on. But that's yeah, that's part of a much larger discussion. The committee itself here, they're not that involved in the funding aspects. I really don't want to tie up much more of their time uh, than required. Um, but Sean, if you could, Sean and Aaron, if you guys could send me um, send me some information you found, I'd be glad to take a look at it and review it, and I could even have some of those discussions with um, with our planner and our manager here, and we could see if we can get a conversation going with all the plans. Sounds good. Um, before uh, bef before I add, before we move on, is that, do you guys have anything else? Nope. All right, guys, um, before we head out of here, uh, does anyone have any board member comments? I'm looking at Mindy. Mindy looks like she has a comment. I have no comment. Okay. You want to name? Okay. No. I have to see this possible. <laughs> <laughs> there's actually a park here right on the busy road. Oh. We have a pocket park for no reason. And it will be a dog park named Mindy. I don't care. All right. Will, any time. Chris, thank you. No comment. Thank you very much. All right. So with that, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn at 12.09 p.m.? Christina. Further discussion? No. All those in favor? Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Yep. Thank you, guys. Uh, let me email me. Tell me anything. I'm going to be out of conference. We need to talk about it. Sounds good.